Hi, I'm Doug Simon. Welcome to the video blog. My guest, Ron Tarosian, President and CEO of 5WPR. Thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. Great. Now, one thing we've had in common is that we're both evangelists for the power of earned media. So you had a chance to take a look at our Media Influencers Report. I'd love to get what were your take on some of the key findings? So first I'll tell you I think you deserve tremendous credit and respect from those of us who are in the industry for producing the type of content that you do produce. I think that there are not enough evangelists in the PR industry talking about the value of PR. I think one of the reasons that we lag behind the advertising industry the marketing industry is there's not enough people who are talking about the PR value, the value of PR to businesses throughout the country. So first of all, let's start by saying thank you for what you do for our industry. Thank you. It's turning into a mutual love fest, so that's good because, you know, it's so true because what's interesting is that even with advertising, let's say you're buying a place of the content there, it's got to be an authentic PR-based voice or the audience is going to opt out. So I think at the end of the day, you know, we're storytellers, okay? I think that this industry is about telling a story. And I think that earned media for us at this agency is something that will always be a part of who we are. It's a fundamental, it's not a bad word for us. Media relations <laughs> is not a bad word at right. 5WPR. We dial and we call media and we have relationships. However, of course, you know, as part of telling a story, digital is a part of that story. Yeah. And we use it constantly in a variety of different ways for many different purposes. For a variety of different reasons, but digital is here and it's here to stay, and you have to adapt you know, to the changing world, and we're going to continue to do that. Yeah, one of the things that surprised us in that report, pleasantly surprised, is the opportunities to earn media with digital content. 76% of digital journalists were saying that they use outside produced video. So as I read that, that was also one of the most interesting things that I found. I think part of that goes to understanding the business of media. Why are they using it? Because, you know, staffing in the newsrooms is down. And therefore, if you make it easy for them to use your video, they will. Um, we do a tremendous amount of crisis work, as you know. And when we're doing high profile crisis work, I don't need to put my client on the camera anymore and subject them to the questioning of ABC or NBC or Fox. If it's a high enough profile story, I know that I can do a video and everybody's going to pick it up. So why do I, I can media train my client, I can cut the video three, four, five, six different times. Now the media might not love that because they want the full access, but if it's the middle of a crisis and it's a high profile story, we've done it on a number of different occasions where we've changed the story tone by using video. And that's just one example of, I think, you know, being able to create content which really matters and which benefits, frankly, the media. Yeah. And of course, you know, ultimately for us, we're serving two masters. We're serving uh, the client and the media. Uh, of course. And, you know, it's so great you say, because one of the other findings was about trust being a problem. And I think from your perspective, where you've been so smart, is that if agencies are not involved in earning media when a crisis hits and they need to earn, if you have that ongoing relationship, you've built that trust. They know they can rely on you to be a straight shooter, even if it's when your client can't make a comment about something. The relationship's there. It's so important when there is that crisis moment. It's funny, you know, we're sitting here and doing this interview today, you know, midweek, late afternoon. Today, I have a call right now, an hour ago, from one of the uh, large New York tabloids. Mm -hmm. And I told him, if I won't comment, I will call you back and tell you my client won't speak about this. And that matters. It's yeah. a major beat reporter that I deal with all the time. And they have a job to do and we have a job to do. You know, I think that it's okay to call them back and say, hey, guys, we're not going to talk about this. But there's other times we have to talk to them on the record, off the record. And again, I think that, you know, when we talk about content creation, op-eds are mm. still a video op-ed of telling a story is still something that we do. Yeah, you've given some great examples of where having video content ready is so valuable. One of the other interesting pieces is that the fact that so many people aren't necessarily disclosing properly in the video, and as a result, media is less likely to use it. Why are people afraid of just saying, hey, we worked with Brand X to make this, and they're working with this person? Isn't that a good thing? So I think, you know, this whole concept of, you know, media not trusting PR is something that, look, the media loves to hate on PR. Of course. And I don't spend too many, I don't spend too much time really worried about that. I think that at the end of the day, you know, something you mentioned earlier, relationships matter. 
Do I think that there should be disclosure? Yes, I think there should be disclosure. And, um, you know, I read about, you know, I was familiar with the FTC findings, and of course, you know, you mentioned it. But, you know, there's many different places where you're talking about sponsored content online, right. where you're talking about, you know, the mixture of, you know, ad there's not quite the church and state of you course. Know, line that, that exists on the media side, right. much because of the economics of what the media business yeah. looks like and many other things. Do I think that there is room for improvement in the PR industry? Yes, absolutely. Right. And yes, there should be disclosure. Um, I think that, though, that's a problem that you know doesn't yeah. just exist on this side of the media aisle. It exists on the other side of the media aisle as well. Yeah. When you're talking about, you know, it's a crowded media world. It's a difficult economic business to be in for the media. And, you know, even something like the New York Daily News, which is now for sale, is losing something like nine figures a year. You know, if somebody came in and said, I'm going to spend X millions of dollars a year, you know, you think you're going to see bad coverage about them? It's still an issue that exists, I think, right. on both sides. So I guess the question now, if a partner came in and said they'd like to buy the Daily News, put you at the helm of it, are you ready to go with your experience in media and earned? Can I'm we turn the Daily News around in this conversation? I'm amazed too? that there's not more brands that don't do that sort of thing. Look, Red Bull is a forward thinking, mm -hmm. and they have a great magazine, right? Right. But, you know, the question is, you know, let's take something like a food magazine or parents mm -hmm. magazine. Let's say you employ 50, 75 people there. So if you are the largest food company in the world, what is it to lose 20 or $50 million on a well-produced content? And I think that that is something that you are going to see increasingly, which means it has to be good content. It has to be well done. Yep. But I'm still amazed that that's not, you know, something that you see. I think, you know, throughout the world you'll see – billionaires in Latin America, in Russia, and other places own media entities for their own interests. I think here it wouldn't surprise me to see brands doing more of that sort of thing when you're talking about, you know, content creation and media. Now, for PR firms, yes, we have to disclose. Yes, we should be talking about who our clients are. Right. And I think that there is room for improvement in that right. in the big picture. And again, I think it's yeah. important that you pointed out, and I think it's good that you yeah. pointed out. And it was even interesting that not only is disclosure the right thing to do, what was interesting about these findings for the first time, it showed that when you do it, they're more likely to use it. Not disclosing it now is a barrier to getting your content placed by digital journalists. Well, Ron, it's always great to speak with you. Congratulations on your continued growth and success as your business enters its teenage years. I'm sure more success will follow. Thank you very much. Thank you for all you do, and thank you for today.